Hello everybody, I'm the Sonic Arrow, and welcome back to Zero Escape VLR. Now, we're going to have to go through the flashback sequence again. But, we're going to... Yep, here we go. Uh, prepare yourselves. There it is. All right, now we are going to betray K. Ugh, I don't want to. I really don't want to. I don't want to. He's going to pick ally, isn't he? Yeah. Well, anyway. Still missing Luna. Ooh! Betrayal across the board. So you pick Betray. You don't feel bad about it or anything? Okay, yeah. I guess that's fair. If I had, then you'd have 9 BP right now, wouldn't you? Nice try, but I'm not going to let you get out of here that easily. Yeah, well, I considered that. Didn't seem likely. Well... Says the guy who told me to trust him so he could betray me. The honesty is refreshing, but that's really not the brightest move. Better than being a dumbass. So you chose Betray? Whoa, whoa. Nobody's saying that. No, Cork being gone has me all in a tizzy, Tenmyoji. As many times as we want, huh? That means you're going to play the AB game over and over using the star keys, right? Yeah, that's right. I forgot to tell you guys. Take a look at the map. There are three white doors in the 4B warehouse. I don't think so. Yeah, but you're not going to be able to get through them until they open. You still got more than 80 minutes until that happens. Yeah, looks like they've been shuffled around again. Looks like I'm a blue solo. What 
about you two? Hmm. Let's see. Okay. Surprise Bulbasaur. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, let's see. We have blue. We have red. And we have green. This is really sloppy, but at the moment, I really don't care. Okay, so this makes magenta. This makes cyan. And this makes yellow. So the yellow pairs mix with me, so I'm going to be all alone. Cyan is going to go with red. And magenta is going to go with green. That's why uh, Five was so upset. Surprise, Bulbasaur. Then what color is Quark? The solos can't group together, right? I see. Where do you think you're going? He, why would he have retrieved the knife that said Myrmidons? Hey, knock it off. We don't actually know one of us is the killer, do we? It was hinted at. Suggested, if you will. But do we trust the rabbit? I don't think Dio is smart enough to actually set up the AI. Why did he kill Alice and Luna now? Is your senior one anyway said he could have done it way before this? While we're, I don't know, unconscious, for instance? What's the point of setting up this whole game just to kill off two of your participants halfway through? It's possible. I think it might be a good idea for, for us to... Might be a good idea... I think it might be a good idea for us to all look for the killer. Precisely. How are we going to pair up then? Oh, yeah? No, I guess you're okay. Oh, they get handcuffed together. Looks like we're all set. That leaves us with the yellow and green doors, then. Once we're all done, let's meet in the 4B warehouse, alright?
Is the... Is the lady still there? I know who she is, but I'm not saying who it is. <sighs> There's no one in the infirmary. No quirk and no killer, at least as far as I can see. Oh, yeah. She was lying silently on the bed furthest away from us. If it weren't for the blood stains on her chest and arm, her peaceful expression would have fooled most people into thinking she was just asleep. No! The blood had dried and darkened and now it looked like any other stain. That was when I noticed it. Huh? Wait a minute, look at her wrist. Yeah, for some reason there's no blood on this part. Watch. A watch, huh? I don't know, it just looks like it was kind of it was kind of wide for a watch. Aren't women's watches usually thinner? Jewelry? You mean like a bracelet or some Of course. Why didn't I see it sooner? This is the same size and shape as our bracelets. Look, look, it's exactly the same width. She was wearing a bracelet when she was killed. She was a participant, just like us. Okay, was something wrong? That means they've been holding on to it this whole time. They've probably still got it. No, wait. They'd been carrying it around. The sensors in the chromatic doors would have picked it up. Without the right combination of bracelets, the secondary door would never have opened. What are you saying? So the killer's running around with the old one's bracelet. And you're telling me they're probably wearing it? Why? For whatever reason, however, they were willing to go to great lengths to ensure that they were. Why would someone do that? Don't tell me it was Dio. That's interesting. Well, there's blood all over the old lady's arm, except for right here. Since that's where the bracelet was, then the bracelet the killer stole should have blood on it. But none of us is wearing a bloody bracelet. So you're saying they cleaned it? Hmm. The luminol spray. Okay, I know how we can identify the killer. We just need some of that luminol. It doesn't matter how well they cleaned it. There should be some traces of blood left. Okay, blood 
leaves behind carbon, which is what luminol actually detects. It bonds to the carbon and emits a faint glow, which can be amplified when uh, when under a UV light or a black light, or can be seen directly with complete darkness, like the dark room from the rec room. So there's your science lesson for today. Hot science tips with the sonic arrow. Yeah. First we need to finish looking for Quark, though. We still got the infirmary and everything beyond the green door. Once we're done with that, we can head back to floor B to meet up with everyone else. Yes, let's... It's not Kay. It's not Clover, or Alice, or Luna, or Tenmyoji, or Quark. Or Phi, or me. Gotta be Dio. I knew there was something off about him the very moment we stopped playing round one. Or the very mo the moment... Yeah, no matter... Everyone besides Luna, he has betrayed. There's three doors here, too. I think we're guaranteed to hit the treatment center at the time, but all but one of them is locked. Looks like two of them are already unlocked. Hmm. Whatever. Let's take the door on the right first. The gardens. Nope, the Golem Bay. Aha! Huh, what's this room? Maybe, but what's our work? Well, we're here to find Quark, and I'll look at our workbench. You go check out the far end, alright? Nothing. He's not here either. Hey, Kay, how's it going over there? Kay, can you hear me? He was bent over with his back to me, peering underneath the thing that looked like a workbench. What the hell? I looked toward him as I spoke. Hey, man, what's going on here? I bent down and saw he was staring at something that appeared to be a safe. Except it was open. It's empty. Was there something in, in there before? Was it? Then what are you doing staring into an empty safe? Wouldn't that have been the team that went through the green door? I think that was Dio, Fi, and Clover. So you're saying they didn't go here? Good question. Well, there's no point in thi there's no point thinking about it. We should get back. Yep. Let's get moving then. Treatment center. Quark's in one of the pods. So this is the treatment center, huh? Don't you think that's kind of strange? Until now, all the chromatic doors have led to a single room each. So why are the two rooms on the other side of the green door? We can talk to the others later, I guess, and see if they know anything. 
Kay and I split up and began to look for places where Quark might have hidden or small holes he might have escaped through. Huh? What are these? The window's all covered with frost on the inside. I can't see in. Yes, might as well. Have at it. Quark? Quark! No, oh no, his, his bracelet. It's, oh god. What? I quickly pressed a finger to Quark's wrist. It was faint, but his heartbeat was there. He's he's alive. He's alive. Oh, thank God. I laughed out loud and grabbed Kay in a bear hug, or at least as much of one as I could manage. He patted me on the back and shared what I thought might have been a relieved chuckle. But if he's still alive, why is his bracelet off? Zero Junior said it would only come off when you died. Technically not the case. When your heartbeat reaches zero is when it comes off. What? Why? Then maybe Zero Senior brought Quark here and put him in the pod thing too. Well, even if he did, we don't have any way to know why. He's sick? What has he got? Yeah, I bet. Do you think you can carry him, or...? Y yeah, sure. Wait, um, I just thought of something. Are you sure he's gonna be alright? Well, what happens if he wakes up? Can he open that thing on his own? But if someone locks him in, he's screwed? Right, yeah. Okay, let's go. Oh, we found him. This is it? Yeah, we sure did. I explained to them how we found Cork in the treatment center. Oh, if I smile is just... Ooh, just on the right side of creepy. Yeah, he'll probably... Yeah, I'll explain it after Tenmyoji and Clover get back. There's something I wanted to ask you about first, though. When you went through the green door, did you search two different rooms? I see. And what was the other one? You know, where there's that intersection with three doors? 
Well, when Kay and I went there, two of the doors were unlocked. You guys unlocked the one that went to the treatment center when you went through the green door. But the other one... I don't know. Yeah. Nothing, really. Who knows? No, there's something I want to check first. They're in the infirmary, aren't they? Handcuffed together. I said nothing and instead made my way over toward the cabinet. Inside was luminol. I reached in, pulled it out, then hit a light switch and flipped it. The room went dark, and I headed back to where the others were still standing. Why, you scared of ghosts? Then show me how brave you are. Stick out your bracelet. You too, Fi, please. Yeah, I want to see the underside of them. I mean the side on the bottom. The side that doesn't have the display on it. Come on, you really gotta make me explain this? Just do it. It's not hard. No, you're fine, Kay. Your bracelet is a little different from ours. But I'll join in just to make it fair. There was a brief moment of hesitation before Dio and Fi stuck out their arms. I held mine out as well, wrist pointed upward. Yeah, just hold it like that for a moment. As fast as I could, I pulled the loom off from my pocket and spread it across all three of our wrists. Dio jerked his arm back with a shout. Don't see anything glowing. Fi's bracelet is clean. So is mine, of course. I'll explain in a minute. Just show me your bracelet. Is something wrong? Just show it to me. Come on, Dio, we don't have time for this. Because I'm trying to prove your innocence. Then just show me your arm. As he spoke, Dio made a break for the exit. He didn't get far. He spun around toward the other exit. Stop him! All three of us left to Dio. Gotcha, sucker! I knew it. His bracelet's glowing. And that means... Dio, you killed the old lady. As quick as I could, I explained to Fi that Kay and I had noticed the old woman's wrist. Yeah, exactly. Even if they'd wipe, wiped it off, I figured the luminol would still react to the blood. Looks like I was right. We've got you, Dio. You might as well confess. Well... Why? <sighs> Something?
So yours is more important than Alice and Luna's lives? Lives? That wasn't you? Where would we put him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think you're onto something, Kay. Let's go with that. We'll let you out when the white doors open. Someone's going to need your bracelet to open the secondary door. I don't think so. So, I guess we figured out who the murderer was. And we found Quark. How much time do we have left? Yeah. Good point. He is part of the Myrmidons. That's why he retrieved the knife. But did he kill Allison Clover? I mean, he's a killer, so why wouldn't... Why wouldn't... Okay, why would he not lie about not killing anybody else? Oh dear. Suspense. Looks like they aren't back yet. Oh man. Now we've got to go look for them. Thank you! 50 minutes. K and I nodded. No, nah, they are super dead. Oh, yeah? How should I know? Pretty much. What? Oh no! We wouldn't be able to go through them. We wouldn't be able to go through the secondary door. Who would be pairing up with Quark? Who's the cyan pair? Tenmyoji and Clover. What's going on? Okay, so I've still got this entire other route to go. 
Uh, I really want to go back here and figure out the password. And I want to go here and continue this escape route, but I can't. Does that mean Clover and Tenmyoji took the bracelet? Then, why aren't they back yet? What? No, that's not possible. The primary doors haven't even opened yet. How? But, well, that's against the rules. No. They aren't. I know who... Tenmyoji, and I know who he is, and I know specifically that the lady who is dead is his wife. I found out, I was googling the characters that appear in VLR to see if there were any other characters that show up, and no, but... I figured out Tenmyoji's first name. Tenmyoji is a surname. And I know from Zero Time Dilemma that the ring on the woman's finger is, is significant. So that's how I know who she is. If they did, we won't know where they went until the door is open for the rest of us. This is still all just speculation, though. Maybe we should go look for them again. One of us can stay behind so that we don't miss them if they come back. Yeah. Of course. Here we go! Yeah, they went through the red door, that's right. The music has left us. This is the pantry? Well, looks like they're not here. Not gonna do us any good to hang around here, though. Let's head upstairs. Hmm. So they went through the magenta door. Let's see if they're still there. Haha, <laughs> elevator go bong! Honey roasted almonds have to be the greatest thing ever. The lounge! Oh no.
You don't want to hear either, huh? Tell me what you love scotch so much, I thought we might find him here drinking some. It was around that time that I noticed Kay was acting strangely. He was staring at the shelf of alcohol in a way that I probably would have described as blankly. If I could have actually seen his eyes. Hey, what's up? You want a drink? Right. Sorry, that sucks. Honestly, I've gotten so used to the suit, i kind of forgotten you were wearing it. How the heck did they make you wear that thing anyway? I still don't remember anything? Really? What did you remember? When, Dad, you remember that? Did it just pop out of nowhere? S sorry. So, you remembered who your father was? What about your mom? So your dad raised you? Okay, stop for a moment and then calmly fold his hands in front of him. He wouldn't allow me to go near him while he was working, but the only times he wasn't working were the times when he was sleeping. As such, the only communication I had was with the education software he'd given me. I suppose I was a fairly expressionless child then. We developed body language to communicate with others, and when no one else to communicate, and with no one else to communicate with, I suppose it makes sense. Once I learned to read and write, I began to realize that my situation was not normal. Many of my books mentioned a mother as part of a family, and several, the mother, father, and children would eat meals together and talk to one another. Soon I found myself longing for a mother of my own. No! Kay doesn't need a tragic backstory! Someone who would always be with me, who would scold me if I did something wrong, at night they would read to me before bedtime. If only I had a mother like that, I thought, I would be so happy. So, for the first time in my life, I asked my father for something. He had finished working and, as usual, was making his way toward his bedroom when I stopped him and asked for a mother. He looked at me silently for a long moment before finally responding, Okay. I remember to this day how happy I was at that moment. A few months later, he called me into his laboratory. It was the first time he'd ever done anything like that. My heart was beating quickly as I stepped inside. Standing next to him was a young woman and my hopes soared, but when he said her name, or rather her ID number, they were dashed. He had given me a robot to play the part of a mother. I didn't want a mother that was just a machine who did what a human told her to. When I told my father that, he looked surprised for the first time in my life. Then he frowned, coughed, and admonished me for being a whiner. He'd never scolded me for anything before. At first I was surprised, then angry. Hot tears streamed down my face. My father ordered the robot to take care of me and shoot us out of his lab. The robot was very convincing, and she smiled and spoke as if she was a real person, but I refused to answer her and locked myself in my room. You can talk to a robot, and it will respond. But in the end, you're still talking to a machine, not a person. If that was what I had wanted, I'd still ha I still had the education software my father had given me. When I ignored the robot as it tried to take care of me, it looked sad. It couldn't really be sad, of course. It was only programmed to look that way. The robot's facade of sadness didn't mean anything to me. After that, I stopped expecting anything from my father. We'd never really spoken to begin with, so it was easy enough for me to make sure we never saw one another. I lived my life as if he didn't exist. Perhaps it seems strange to you that I continued to live with him. But I never considered leaving. Perhaps in the hidden depths of my heart, I longed for a relationship with my father. Everything changed when I was 18. 
I left my room one morning to find a woman standing outside of it. She was the first human I'd ever seen apart from my father, and I was understandably surprised. For a moment, I thought my father had created a new robot, but when I told her that, she laughed and explained that she had come to help him. As it turned out, she was a very mysterious person. She was much older than I was, but something about the way she behaved was almost girlish. She would tell me stories about the world outside in such a way that I never, that I was never sure if she was telling me the truth or making up fantastic lies. Ultimately, though, the truth didn't matter. I loved her stories. She wasn't helping my father directly with his research, so I spent most of my days with her. Before long, I discovered she'd known my father when he was young. She told me stories of how he'd fallen in love as a younger man, and I began to imagine the person he'd fallen in love with had been her, and that she was, in fact, secretly my mother. After she settled in with us, our long-established routine began to change drastically. First, we started to eat together. Before then, I had never shared a meal with anyone in 18 years. She scolded me for my table manners, or my accurately the lack thereof. If I was going to eat with others, she said, I would need to be more polite. Having eaten alone for my entire life, manners had never been something I'd even thought about. My father got in trouble, too, when he made the mistake of reading through the research papers during dinner. The look of surprise and embarrassment on his face made me burst into laughter. I couldn't remember the last time I'd shared a laugh with my father. It might have been the first time. The room was considered our living room. The room we considered our living room changed, too, before it had just been another room, but she made it comfortable. After we finished our dinner, I would sit on the sofa and relax with her and my father. Those times were the ones I cherished the most. For a little while every day, I got the family I'd longed for ever since I was a child. At her suggestion, I started to help with my father's research. K is a robot designed by whoever created this facility. He specialized in genetic engineering. Wait, no, he ate food. So, he's not a robot. He's just a child. Okay. He's just a guy in the... In a suit. It's still just a suit. Because we can open it! Duh! Uh. Specialized in genetic engineering, and I discovered I had an interest in it as well. Time faded away, and I lost myself in research. Now that we were working and studying together, my father and I had a great deal to talk about. For the first time in my life, we began to speak with one another like a father and son. Whenever I impressed him with something I had learned, I felt a surge of happiness, and it drove me to study even harder. My days felt full, right, and meaningful, but most importantly, I was happy. For year, Four years passed in the blink of an eye until one day I happened to overhear my father and the woman speaking in the laboratory. Their tone was serious, so I listened closer, curious to know what they were talking about. That was when I heard her say that she planned to give her life to achieve their goals. It was clear that she wasn't being metaphorical. She would have to die. I was in shock. The research I had thrown myself into would lead to her death. I asked my father to stop his research immediately. He refused to listen. She agreed with him. She told me that since that she had become prepared for what she had to do since the day she came to our facility. My father had known about it from the beginning as well. Angry and disappointed, I began to investigate what exactly the research I'd been helping with was working toward. Perhaps I thought I could figure out a way to keep her alive. I discovered much more than I bargained for. To begin with, I learned that the ultimate success of my father's research would require a good deal of sacrifice, and I learned that my own existence was just another part of his project. I had been created to function as my father's spare. If he died during his research, I intended to continue it in his place. I was stunned. I was furious with my father and with her, and even the research I'd poured myself into for four years. There was only one thing to do, destroy the facility and end my father's horrible research once and for all. I made plans to destroy the main reactor and with the entire facility, but she saw right through me. My father was livid and locked me in my room until his research was complete. All I could think of was how I might stop him. She did her best to convince me that I'd misunderstood, that everything would be fine. As much as I wanted to believe her, I remembered in the back of my mind that she'd been the one who pushed me to become in involved in my father's research. Had that been an earnest desire to give me something to do with my life, or... Still, I couldn't bring myself to hate her. She had given me a reason to live, even if it had conspired... No, even if she had conspired with my father to mold me into his replacement, the warmth she'd shown me had been real. She'd made me feel as if I had a real family, and that was something I wouldn't have given up for the world. I pleaded with her to leave, but she quietly shook her head. There was something very special to her, she told me. He had saved her life once, and she felt her death would help to repay that favor. I know exactly who this is! Oh my god! No! No, 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 no. She would have liked nothing more than to marry him and live a happy, normal life together, but she couldn't. For his sake, she said, and for the sake of the future she had wanted, she was determined to see my father's research succeed. I realized then that although she was the most important person in my life, there was something more important than me and hers. She tried to explain that beyond what 
you could see was a future where no one would have to die, but I refused to listen. What good was a potential future to me? It was what I had now that I wanted. I couldn't stand to think that she would give her life for a man I'd never, ever seen. So I shut myself off from the world. Perhaps that is why I lost my memory. I know exactly who Kay's father is. I know who the woman is. Uh, ha, 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 ha. No! Kay let out a deep, tired sigh. It's okay. So you remember almost everything? wrong are you okay okay take as long as you need I'll go look for clover and Temioji myself Don't apologize, Kay. You're okay. you're good, man. Lowered himself heavily onto the red sofa in the corner of the room. Thank you for confiding in us. Well, guess I'd better get moving then. You got my trust, bro. I'm sorry. Stepped out of the room and nearly ran into Fi. What are you doing? You're supposed to be waiting back in the warehouse. Yeah. He's in the lounge. Well, not quite. Instead of waiting for my answer, she opened the door to the lounge and walked in. I guess he's not feeling too well. He said he wanted to rest for a bit. I think so. We should leave him alone right now, though. Remember, there's a real person inside that suit. I'm sure he's just tired. Hmm? Huh? Really? Well, I guess I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little exhausted. I mean, all of a sudden I wake up trapped in some weird-ass game and then dead bodies start turning up. Honestly, I'm amazed I've managed to hold on to my sanity for as long. Just about everything here makes absolutely zero sense. The more I try and figure any of it out, the more I feel like my brain's just going to melt and run out my ears. You know what I'm talking about, right? We managed to figure out who the killer was, but there's still a hundred other questions we have no idea about. Where the hell are we? Why are we even here? What's this whole nonary game thing for? What is Zero Senior up to? I'm gonna throw an answer in for where the hell are we? We're on the moon! No. That would be redonkulously far. And I'm sure we would have woken up several times over or had the ability to if we had been put in a rocket and sent to space. 
Except for Sigma. He's a robot. He he probably would have been there, but you still have to transport everybody else. I don't think so. Hell, how about who Zero Senior is? Rabbit said it was one of us, but... Do you think it's Dio? Besides, I still don't know why Dio killed them. He said he was ordered to do it, but... And there's more, too. What about the old lady? Who is she? What's her deal? Hell, what are any of our deals? I don't know jack shit about anybody here. I don't even know anything about you, Fi. No, that's not it. She trailed off. Hmm? You heard that, right? Let's go have a look. Maybe they got on the elevator? Aha. Let's go. Jumpy, no. Sorry, I'm remembering 999. Which way? Where do you think they went? Why? Uh, so? They're fine. Tell me Ojo and Clover probably made that noise. And if they didn't, well, maybe both of them. But I don't think they hurt Quark or Dio. Hmm? Are you serious? You're gonna believe him? All right, fine. I want to make a prediction. We headed to the first pod. I want to make a prediction. If Phi is like us, does that mean she's a robot too? She could probably tell we're a robot if she had gotten information from a different timeline. Is she a robot too? I cracked open the top and lifted it back. Oh. There's Quark, sound asleep. See? Let's open his. Ugh! What, what the hell? It was pointless to check his pulse. He was obviously dead, but I did it anyway. 
Yeah, he's dead. You know that means he asphyxiated? But why? Who? Right. Without waiting for me to follow, Fi turned and ran off. I took a deep breath and followed. How are we doing on time? Nah, a little longer. Fi and I burst into the lounge and ran up to K. K, wake up! Something's happened. When he didn't move, I grabbed him by the shoulders and shook. He twitched and quickly sat up. We explained about how we'd found Dio dead and how it looked like he died of asphyxiation. Did you grab his bracelet? It appeared that someone had reduced the oxygen level of his pod to zero. The only people who could have done it are Clover and Tenmyojin. What? No. That's impossible. Are you suggesting Quark woke up, opened his pod from the inside, killed you, and then went back to sleep? I mean, technically, there's a lever on the inside. We wanted to explain about the sound we'd heard. Yes. Nope. Oh, crap. We've only got seven minutes until the primary doors open. His what? Go get it! Then we need to hurry. We'll drop by the treatment center on the way back and grab the bracelet. The yellow pair bracelets? Are these Alice and Luna's? Grab the bracelets and shove them into my pocket. My immediate thought was, clamp them onto your dick! And then I realized, wait, that's necrophilia. Shit. They're not here. Quark's bracelet? 
Or what? Oh, come on, man. You better not give me that maybe they're already dead crap. I got enough of it from Dio. Quark had 9 BP. You gotta be kidding me. This isn't funny, Fi. If you're right, then you, K, Quark, and I are the only people still alive in here. He heard a noise and he turned. What the hell? But why? There's no point. Oh no. Shit. You're... you're gonna... How can you be so calm? In five minutes, you're going to be... Be... Fuck that. You know I can't just ditch you guys like that. You think I don't know that? But what kind of a monster am I if I just leave you here to die? Ah! God damn it! This was bad. What was I going to do? I needed to calm down. Still waiting. Okay, there's a lock here. Absolutely. Just calm down. Calm down and think. There had to be a way to save them. There had. To each according to his needle. Of course. The antidote. I didn't have time to explain. I took off running toward the exit. Stay here. I'll be right back. Bolted out of the warehouse toward the treatment room. I think Dio put it in his pocket. Come on, come on, come on. Please still have it. 
as well as pouring down my face, but I didn't bother wiping it off. It wasn't time. I ducked frantically through Dio's coat until... Aha! I found it! Oh. There's only one dose. The injection gun uses the whole bottle at once. Shit. I can't save both of them. One minute! Shit! Spun around and shot out of the treatment center. Run, Sigma! Run, Sigma! Run, Sigma! No, you gotta be kidding me. There's a sharp, quick pain in my wrist, barely even noticeable. I couldn't feel anything flowing in my veins, but I knew it was there. First would be the anesthetic soap row. I blinked and my vision started to blur. When I tried to think, it felt like my mind had been stuffed with cotton. My legs began to wobble, and then gave out entirely as I crumpled to the floor. No, I couldn't fall asleep. I had to give one of them the antidote before embracing and injecting me the tube of curin. With every ounce of strength I could muster, I forced my eyes back open. Came if I lay a limp on the floor in front of me. In my right hand, I could feel the injector gun with its precious cargo. I could only pull the trigger once. Who was I going to choose? Phi or K? No, what was I thinking? There was only one answer. Phi. I didn't even have a choice. After all, K's entire body was covered with in impenetrable metal. I'm sorry, K. Someone of as much energy as I couldn't drag myself toward Phi. After what felt like an eternity, I was finally within arm's reach. With no time to waste, I pressed the gun to her arm and pulled the trigger. I injected you with neostigmine. It's a type of cholinesterase inhibitor. It's the antidote to the muscle relaxant. Because I can't use the injection gun on K. It'll never get through the metal. Heh. <laughs> Guess you've got a point. Honestly, didn't even cross my mind. Hey, come on. Is that any kind of say to someone who's about to die? How about something more tender? Her words slurred and slowed, and her eyes fluttered closed. She wasn't dead, of course. I could hear the faint sound of her breathing, and see her chest rise and fall. Good. Fi's gonna be alright. But, Kay. I looked over in his direction. That was when I noticed it. Open? There's a hole here on the back of your head. Yeah, it looks like you insert something. It says open, so maybe if you put some kind of key in there. Wait. Then he... But when could he have... It's empty. Was there something in there before? But what if he'd lied? Could Kay have taken the key? Yeah, the key was... How'd he got... How he'd gotten it didn't really matter anymore. What did matter was that Kay had been able to remove his armor. And he had. Holy shit. Then, that would mean... Dio's killer is... I coaxed as much strength as I could from my increasingly lethargic body and crawled toward K. He opened it. K! 
Wake up. Come on, talk to me. I grabbed his shoulder and shook him until he finally shifted and spoke. I just need to know one thing. Did you kill Dio? You weren't sleeping, were you? After I left, you took off your armor. You didn't want to go the same way I had, so you took the other door. After you went the long way around through the warehouse and the crew quarters, you headed for the elevator. I bumped into Fi and we went back to the lounge to check on you. We saw you. Or we saw your armor, I guess. By then, you would have been out of it. While we were in the lounge, you went to the treatment room and killed Dio. I don't think so. Maybe. He must have turned off the oxygen to his pod although you probably didn't stick around to make sure he died. Well, this might be the facility that Kay had been working on. He would know. He'd be smart enough to create Zero Junior. I'm betting you were in a hurry to get back before Fi and I noticed something was, was up. Once you got back to Flore, you needed us out of the lounge, so you made a noise in the hall to lure us out. Then you ran around and took the long way back to the lounge so you could enter through the rear door. Then how did the elevator get down to the bottom? Once you were there, you put your suit on again and waited for us. As soon as we found Dio's body, we did exactly what you'd expected. Kay, wake up. Something's happened. He pretended to wake up very disoriented and confused. What is it? Come on, Kay. I'm almost out of time. Did you kill Dio? Why? The old woman! The old woman! Okay. Ah, uh, oh no! Okay, it's not who I thought it was. Wh what? Wait, are you saying... Wh whoa, hold on. What do you mean, here? Forget? He wasn't making sense. I was about to die. How on earth would I be remembering anything for more than a few seconds?
Put up a surprise Bulbasaur. Milkavoli. What the hell? Hey, Kay, who told you to tell me this? No, who are you? Show me. Show me who you really are. I grabbed a hold of Kay's mask and tore it off. Wh what? No, that's that's impossible. That face. It's it's my face. I pulled a sharp pain in my left face and my body collapsed unceremoniously. The second drug. Tubal curing. My vision began to blur and my head felt unnaturally heavy. What? 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 The world faded away and my consciousness slipped down into the cold, dark waters of nothingness. <laughs> Wait just a minute. Back up. Oh, Sigma's last name is Klim with a K. K-L-I-M. I get it. That was the letter he remembered. It was K. Klim. Oh. Sigma K. Oh. I get it now. All right. The end. K ending, right? K's end. The second gate. I'm guessing that's the password. Okay, and ah, oh, through the looking glass. All right then. So the password. Was. Milkavoli. That'll open the second gate, so that's probably the password kill, right? Alright, we got K's end. How can finding K be saved? Yep. <coughs> Five minutes of life. You know what? I'm curious. Okay, we can't do anything yet. There had to be a way. Yeah. The antidote to the tubo curing. So what's this? Who planted the bomb? How do we stop by? Right. Game over. Who planted the bomb? These both lock seven and nine. Wrong string of numbers. Haven't found that yet. Well, that's that, so I am all out of time for this episode. I'm going to roll right into the next one before I take my my dumb ass to bed. So, thank you guys so much for watching. This, was, this game is so much fun. I love these games oh so much. The choices, the story, how it all ties together. It's beautiful. It gets confusing a little, but... Huh! Who played to the bomb? I'll tell you who did it. It was Kay, because he's me! Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. This was a lot of fun, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!